Hello Wanderers and welcome to The Last Wanderer of Mars. Today is something a little bit different. Today I'm taking you to Mars. Smoke and rockets, Commander. Are we going to fly all the way to Mars? Well, not exactly. We're going to take ourselves a little excursion here at Epcot in Florida at a ride called Mission Space. Mission Space is actually the second ride featuring a trip to Mars at Walt Disney World. Its predecessor was in Tomorrowland at the Magic Kingdom. Its best special effect was seats that lowered during takeoff and then slowly lifted again to simulate weightlessness in space. What we're about to experience here at Epcot is a few light years beyond that. So let's get a ticket. So what's the difference? The other one spins, the green one doesn't spin. What she means by spins is that two of the four circular bays inside are motion simulators that move up and down and from side to side synchronized to the action seen through the view screens. The other two bays are centrifuges that create up to two G's of force to simulate takeoff, landing, and the actual forces you'd feel on a real flight to Mars. Okay, which one does spin? The orange one. Ah, your orange? Yes. All right, good. <laughs> Thank you. We have our orange ticket, which means we'll be on the fast track and just inside the Planet Mars Pavilion. This is the capsule that we'll be flying in. Mission Space is a totally interactive ride, and those are the controls that we're going to be using. They'll tell you to use the command on these particular controls in four different stations there, which we'll be given instructions in just a moment. Mission Space should have been called Mission to Mars because it's based on the old 90s film starring Gary Sinise. A film by Brian De Palma made in 2000. Here in the queue, you'll find an awful lot of the props that uh, Brian De Palma used in the filming of, of uh, Mission to Mars. This is the single spaceship that they used, the Mars truck ship. De Palma wanted to take an awful lot of shots around it, which is why it was built at this kind of size. This is the gravity wheel that De Palma used in filming Mission to Space. Normally this rotates, and in the film you see people walking the threads so that it simulates having Earth-type gravity. Put the entire prop into the pavilion here, but they only used half of it because the whole prop wouldn't actually fit inside the pavilion. This is an area called the tower. The panels and blinking lights you see don't do anything, they're just for show. But behind them are the actual controls for all four bays, which is why there are crewmen back there. This is team dispatch from here. We'll be put into the various ready rooms at back when the real show begins. One. Just your team number three, please. Number three? Yes. Right. How many? Yeah, this is the ready room. This is where we'll get our first instruction. From here we'll go into the pre-flight corridor and then into a capsule. Welcome to the 
welcome to the International Space Training Center. You're here today to train for the greatest adventure in the history of mankind, the exploration of deep space. I know you're probably feeling a little bit nervous right now, but don't worry. Every astronaut has felt that way at one time or another, even the heroes who went to the moon. But there is one thing that they have that you don't have. Right now, at NASA and ISTC facilities around the world, future astronauts are learning how to live and work in space. But you're here today for flight training, the most thrilling experience that any astronaut candidate will ever have. Before you decide if it's right for you, let me introduce you to your spacecraft. The X-2 Deep Space Shuttle. It's powered by solid hydrogen and can accelerate from zero to 6,000 in 60 seconds. So when you hear the words, go for launch, you'll definitely want to hang out. Now, you've already been organized into teams, and soon each of you will be assigned a position. Navigator, pilot, commander, or engineer. And the success of your mission will depend on all of you working together as a team. I'll be your captain, and in a few minutes I'll give all of you specific assignments. But first, our flight director has some safety instructions for you. Lieutenant? Remember the team number you're standing on. When the doors in front of you open, you will be directed to a flight station with that number on it. When you get there, please stand on the circles. During your Orange Team more intense training mission, you will be enclosed inside X-2 flight trainers that produce deep space flying conditions such as turbulence and G-forces. Those who are prone to motion sickness or made uncomfortable by enclosed dark spaces, <coughs> simulators or spinning should bypass this experience. As you can see, astronaut flight training isn't like anything you've ever experienced before. It is intense. And if you would like to opt out, you can sign up for mission control training in the advanced training lab. Just ask any member of the ISTC crew for directions. As for the rest of you, report for your pre-flight briefing. It's go time. Trainees, we're going in one team at a time. Five, please come in first, then four, three, two, then one. Row six and five. Row seven and four. pre-flight corridor. Just inside the door is where the capsules are. Here we'll get the final instructions and actual team assignments for the interactive adventure that awaits us inside this door. You don't have to know how to fly in space. <laughs> selected to train for an elite mission, the first mission to Mars. Robotic teams have already established your landing site here at the North Polar Cap. Your mission is to get to that site. Your flight path to Mars will take you around the moon for a lunar gravity assist. But even with that slingshot assist, your trip will take three months, so we'll have to put you into hypersleep. Don't worry, it'll only seem like a second or two to you. I'll give you a wake-up call when you get to Mars. D minus three minutes and counting. Okay, now listen up. Here are your assignments. Navigator, you'll fire the thrusters for lunar orbit insertion and for descent to the surface of Mars. Pilot, on my signal, I'll need you to trigger the second stage rocket and also deploy the shields. Commander, you'll be responsible for first stage separation and activating manual control for landing. Engineer, when you I'm the engineer. Time, you'll activate hyperspeed. You'll also extend the wings for landing. Don't worry. When it's time to push the buttons, they'll light up. Then I'll give you the go. One last thing. In the event of an emergency landing, there are control sticks in every crew position. 
Okay, Lieutenant. Any final instructions for the new kids? When the flight bay doors open, follow the markings on the floor to your capsule. Then move all the way across, taking your crew positions in the cockpit, and stow all personal items in the compartment in front of you. Then reach up and pull down your restraint. Now listen carefully. Leaning forward, closing your eyes, or looking left or right during your flight could disorient you. So keep your head back against the headrest, keep your eyes open at all times, and focus straight ahead even if you start to feel disoriented. They're all yours, Capcom. Well, I guess that's everything. Good luck, Mars team. You are on the clock. Attention, trainees. Follow the box on the floor to your x trainer and begin boarding now. Thank God for air. The other way, the other way. Store personal items in the compartment in front of you, then reach up and pull down on the restraints. Space sickness bags are located on the instrument panel. Pilot, the X-2 is an excellent ship. All you have to do is fire the second stage yes, and deploy well. the shield. Gotcha. Go flight. Surgeon, how are we doing? No Commander Pulfrate is a little high. Go. Commander, everything's A-OK. -okay. Oh. Just concentrate on your assignment. Oh. First stage oh. step oh. and manual control. Control are proud to be a part of this historic liftoff of the first mission to Mars. Mission Control, this is the firing room. Give us the go, no go for launch. Once the launch begins, the centrifuge starts hitting a max speed of 16 rotations a minute around the bay. And do you feel the speed? Oh, <laughs> you bet. Once these rockets fire, it's back against the seats. 2G speed again. In fact, this is the fastest we get. This is where the motion generators take over, twisting and turning us to avoid the asteroids. Now, it's back to full speed. Yahoo! Hold back! Hold back! Left! Pull left! Watch the canyon roll! 
we were flying on. They're attached by these huge arms to the center spindle. So that this is actually the huge centrifuge. for Mission Space. Mission Space was actually built at a cost of a hundred million dollars. It was originally made to uh, be displayed at the Kennedy Space Center on the coast, but the cost escalated to too much. Disney bought it up and put it here in the Epcot Park, where the Old Horizons Pavilion used to be. It spins at uh, 2 G's. You actually hit 2 G's. Now, there's rumors out there that it used to go 4 G's, but there's no truth to that. It was always 2 G's. So anyway, thanks for coming with me on a flight to Mars, and I'll see you next time on the next Wanderer of Mars. Subscribe. Spoken Rockets, Commander. You mean they haven't subscribed already?